everyone, Everythingy here with another quick OBS tutorial about video settings since a lot of my friends and watchers have been asking like, wow, your stream looks really good. What settings do you use in OBS and how can I make my stream more efficient and look better because right now it doesn't look that as good. Um, so yeah, it definitely helps to um, look uh, at your settings and understand what all the things mean uh, because they can really improve the quality and also reduce the CPU usage and which means you can run at higher frames in your games. So today I will try to explain all the features of OBS. So let's quickly open up OBS. I'm also having one open right now to record all of this, but I cannot change the settings from that one. So I have a second uh, OBS running. And also, the new teams are awesome. If you want to know how you can uh, pick them, they're just below here. I also made a separate video on them. You can watch that one as well. And um, first off, we go to video because the canvas, which you see behind me, uh, behind this frame, I mean, is uh, this resolution right here. And this is, I believe, your recording resolution. Um, but I actually don't record at um, full HD. But my canvas is for at full uh, HD because uh, all of my games and everything is full HD. And I do record the footage at full HD. But streaming, I actually downscale to, if we go to output, to HD. Because uh, one of the reasons I do that is because it takes, one, lower resolution. Means less uh, CPU usage, which is great. And also because it's less taxing, for example, on mobile watchers. Because a 1080p 60fps stream, watching that on your smartphone is pretty demanding. And 720p 60fps uh, still looks great for shooters. Um, so I use that to keep like uh, my mobile uh, device audience in mind that are using their um, like mobile data to watch my streams or Wi-Fi. Which might not always be as stable. So for FPS values... If you're a PC gamer, you know that FPS stands for, stands for frames per second. And um, if you play like an action game or a sh first person shooter, this is really important to have at 60 FPS because it will look a lot smoother like in game for uh, 30. Uh, 30 FPS is more for like if you have um, turn based strategy games or I don't know, puzzle games with, la with less moving things going on. Um, and the 30, you can turn it down to 30 FPS because it will use, uh, again, less CPU. And yeah, it's important to keep that CPU uh, usage as low as possible if you don't want to have lag in your games or like get a laggy stream. And now let's look at some of the more advanced settings. So I rescale my output down to HD. Um, the encoder is something that, okay, I have an NVIDIA graphics card, so I can also use um, my graphics card for the encoding. But... I don't use that because I have an i7 uh, 70, uh, 4770K, uh, which is really powerful to handle just a basic 70, 20p, uh, 60 FPS stream. Uh, but you could also use your uh, video card if you or your graphics card if your CPU is uh, actually not that powerful. Uh, but I do use my graphics card for uh, to help out with recording since that really helps. But that's something you can experiment with, like, hey, can I use, should I use my CPU or should I just use my GPU? Then we come down to the fun settings, which will determine a lot of things. Uh, first, we have rate control and we have bit rate. Uh, bit rate is just the amount of data uh, used every second by your stream. Um, so more data used means a higher quality stream because you can have more details. However, it also means more work for your CPU. Um, so that one you don't want to turn up that high, but luckily Twitch and YouTube provided us with a really nice overview of what um, bit rates you should use for certain resolutions. So 1080p, 60fps, a really high bit rate, and for example for my streams I use um, this one um, between uh, 3500 and 5000 kilobytes per second, which uh, bit rate, the bit rate in OBS is in kilobits per second, so... Just plug in 5000 here and you're good to go, apparently. Um, then we also have the frame rate. So even if you don't uh, want to stream at full 60 FPS, you can also apparently stream at 50 FPS on Twitch and YouTube. By the way, these links will both be in this video description. Also recommends for 1080p uh, or 720p 60 FPS. Like a little a wider range, but it's almost the same as the Twitch one. Um, so... 
How do you know what stream uh, you can handle? Well, that also depends on your internet speed connection. So I have glass fiber, um, so I have 100 um, uh, megabits per second. So that's um, like 5,000 5, kilobits is of course five megabits. So five will obviously not impact this that much. And why would you say like, okay, why don't you turn it up? Like I could, but that would of course mean um, my CPU has to work more and then my game starts la lagging a bit as well. And of course you also don't have to use like 90,000, uh, 90, even though of course I, my, my bandwidth can handle it, but you never know like when somebody else is using the internet and it's also just unnecessary. Like you can have great detail with just um, 6,000 kilobits per second. So why would you use more? Because the quality after a while, like this is the maximum they recommend. So beyond that, uh, you won't see any big quality improvements anymore. Uh, the keyframe interval is mostly something you shouldn't be that much concerned with. OBS even has it set to automatic, uh, which is this zero. So that will automatically set it to whatever side you're streaming, what they want. Um, you could change it to two, but just leaving it at zero for Twitch and YouTube is fine. Um, so a bit more about the rate control, which will maybe change your bitrate. Uh, constant bitrate just keeps it uh, um, all always at 5000, for example, if you choose 5000. Uh, adaptive bitrate is pretty cool because it will lower your bitrate if your uh, bandwidth, uh, so this is the Wikipedia page, and this is a really helpful graph, like if you have less bandwidth, it will have a lower bitrate and when you have a lot of available bandwidth, you uh, will use a higher bit rate. So this is really great for people who have an unstable internet connection and want to have like a varying bit rate to, you know, change the amount of uh, bits they push, push out depending on how much, uh, well, of your network uh, bandwidth is available. Then we also have variable bit rate, which will aim to keep the quality of your stream the same. And it's also quite similar to constant rate factor, which is CRF. Uh, which also aims at the same thing, just um, changing your bit rate uh, depending on the amount of moving things because it, when there's a lot of motion, uh, you need a higher bit rate to make it look good. Uh, that's why, for example, like when you see confetti on screen uh, in vi uh, videos, uh, it looks like the quality the uh, <laughs> sorry, the quality of the video goes down, but that's actually because it's uh, more difficult to encode a lot of moving objects. And um, these two aim at when there's less motion, they will lower your bitrate. And when there's a lot of motion, they will um, increase your bitrate. And that will uh, overall result in um, a more constant quality stream. But the easiest one to use is just the constant bitrate factor since, well, they could be helpful in certain situations, but usually they're not really necessary. And that's helpful because you always know how many bits you're putting out. And you know that the CPU usage will also remain the same. Then we have some more advanced settings which aren't really necessary. The profile is just depends on the device you're playing it on. But all modern devices like smartphones can deal with the main and high profile. And the tune is some sp specific OBS settings which uh, you can look them up what they do. Um, they're mostly just about specialized, like this one is encoding specialized for animation, this one is for film, this one's for still images, if you just have a still image, but which you probably don't if you're streaming games, um, but you don't need them. And finally we have some advanced settings which you can use uh, some commands in the encoder. You can look them up, um, it's pretty technical and way out of the scope of this video, so I won't go into that, and I also don't use any uh, of the settings myself. Uh, but there you can also plug in like uh, bitrate, rate control, CPU. You can also put that in. This is like a command line. Uh, audio. Well, audio bitrate. YouTube videos are like at 192. You can increase it a bit, but after 256, it becomes pretty hard to notice the difference, even with good speakers. Um, but I use the full quality because my CPU can easily handle it. If you want to see what CPU uh, you should use, you can have, um, let's see, Handbrake Benchmarks, which is, Handbrake is an encoding software, so just like OBS, it encodes uh, videos. And usually the more cores you have, the faster your stream, or the easier it is for your CPU to handle the encoding, 
because encoding use uh, can be really efficient um, with multiple uh, cores. So you can see in this one, that one only had i7s, but here you see the i5s get beat by all the i7s. And uh, you can also see that the Ryzen's, which have eight cores actually, completely destroy the uh, quad cores of the i7. So, so usually when, for gaming, you don't necessarily need more CPU cores um, because they're quite expensive and uh, they don't won't give you that much of an improvement. But if you consider streaming, they might be uh, a good choice to consider because for streaming and encoding video, they really help out. So I hope you now know more about these settings and know what they do, how they influence your stream quality and influence your CPU usage. And um, using this sheet, you can kind of decide on your own um, what settings you should use. And if you want to see uh, my streams, I have some streams uploaded on YouTube and I stream on Twitch as well using these settings. So you can see for yourself how it looks and you can try it out with your own PC. And these are some really really great settings because, well, they also follow Twitch guidelines. So if you th think, for example, okay, well, I want to stream at 30 FPS, well, then you can lower the bitrate apparently to between these two. And with that, I wanted to thank you for watching this l very long video, I think. It's uh, probably over the 10 minute mark already. And if there are any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Uh, I will try to help you out and maybe other members of the community can also uh, help you out with picking the right settings for you, uh, your processor and uh, setup. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more OBS tutorials in the future, uh, please leave a like, subscribe to be notified when I release a new video. And I hope to see you in one of my streams. That's everything. Everything out.